Okay, so I've finally got VNC working on my Raspberry Pi 5 and uh, it's now working remotely as well. So my iPad, which isn't on my local network, you can see it's tethered to my phone at the moment. Uh, if I open VNC Viewer and tap on Raspberry Pi 5, I might have to put a password in. I do. Okay, so that's the password. Hit connect and I now have remote desktop. So you can see if I get both screens in, so we can launch apps and it's nice and uh, considering this is working through my mobile phone through a mobile network uh, it's nice and snappy and seems to be working fine so if i launch imager and if i launch uh, chromium you can see all that's coming up and all easy to navigate so let's show you how to do this so i'm going to start off with a fresh copy of raspberry pi os so if i launch imager and choose device, Raspberry Pi 5, operating system, Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit, and my SD card, let's just plug that in, there we go, and hit next, and no to change any settings, and yes, I'm sure. And let's come back when that's all done. And obviously just follow all the steps as normal just to set up the OS for the first time. Now, if you haven't already got a real VNC account, have a look for this video, free remote VNC account. Uh, it's very easy to set up, but I go through all the steps in that. And then just download the Real VNC Remote Viewer app to your device of choice. So obviously, in my case, mine's an iPad, but it works with Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and so on. Now, I've been playing around with this a bit, and if you just want to use it locally, it's more simple. So all you would do to use it locally, uh, Control-Alt-T to open a terminal, and type in sudo raspi-config. And then we go to interface options and VNC and then enable that. So yes, VNC server is enabled, but you'll notice that it, it isn't up here. There's no, there's no box up here with VNC, which there was on the initial install I was showing, but I'll show why that is later on in the video. So VNC server is enabled. So we go back to this box and hit okay. And uh, let's do finish. And then if we do if config, that will give us the IP address, uh, which is important. So this is 192.168.1.184. So that's its address on my local network. So remember, this bit's just for the local network. So now on my iPad, if I go to the VNC app, now we press the hamburger menu, which is the top left three lines, and then go to address book. You can see there's a few things in here already. If I press plus, I can create from a new IP address. So let's type that in. So 192.168.1.184. And we'll call it Pi5 and hit save. And if we hit connect and hit continue, then we just need to put the password in of the Pi. And this is the username and the password that you just use to set up your new Raspberry Pi OS build. And you can do remember password if you want, or if you want to be some more secure, you type it in every time. I'll just hit continue. And there's my desktop on my iPad. So this is on my local network at the moment. Uh, and as you can see, that was very, very easy to do. But let's show you how to set it up that you can remotely access your Pi anywhere you have an internet connection. So this can be over mobile data from someone else's network, uh, but you will have complete control of your Raspberry Pi 5 remotely. So let's quit out of this. So if I press the X on my iPad, that takes us back to this screen. So I'm back on my Pi 5 locally now, and uh, there's a few things I need to do. So we need to go Raspi config again, so control Alt t and sudo Raspi config. Then we need to go to advanced options, and we need to switch away from Wayland. So it's using Wayland as the window manager at the moment, but we need to switch to X. So let's click on that. And you can see it's the top one here, open box window manager and hit okay and finish. And I need to reboot to apply those changes. Okay, so now what we need to do is go back in again to sudo raspi config and under interface options, go to VNC, and we need to enable it again and hit OK. And you can see top right hand corner, we have real VNC on there. 
So that's worked. So if I hit finish, I don't have to restart that. Let's click on it. And you need to have an account for this to be enabled, which I did explain in the other video. So there's a link in the description to that. But let's sign in. And I've got a long, complicated password created by my iPad for this. Let's just type all that in and hit sign in. And I'm going to hit next. So allow cloud and direct connections, but obviously you can tailor that to however you want to use it. I'm going to use a VNC password. So set password and just tap something in there that you're going to remember. And let's hit next. And again, you can tailor this to however you want it to be. I'm just going to hit next. I'm going to call it Pi5 and then hit apply. And done. So that now can be accessed remotely. So my Mac is currently on my local network. So let's change that and tether it to my phone. There you go. So that will be coming through my phone's network. And you can see the local version is here. But if I go to Lee's team home, uh, then I'll be able to find this new one, Pi 5X. So if I double click on that, that should launch. And if we hit continue, pop the password in and hit OK. And here is my Pi on my MacBook. And if I go full screen, you can see, uh, well, it doesn't quite fill the screen because it's the, a different ratio. But just to show how responsive it is, so if we launch something, uh, again, like uh, Raspberry Pi Imager, let's launch the browser. And let's just call up something like BBC Sport and go full screen with that. And just show that you know all the gestures and everything are working. And if I click on that, uh, it is a bit delayed coming through mobile data. You can see it's actually controlling my Pi much quicker than it does on the Mac, so it updates a lot a lot quicker. But it's a really good way of updating and maintaining or downloading files that you want to download at home, but you're away from home. I use it for that a lot, and you know I do find it very very useful. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.